reverse mortgages. Yeah. Essentially, it's a way for you to take out equity of your home if you're 55 years or older. Okay. Um, so, so you have to meet that criteria. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone sitting at the table? <laughs> uh, combined? Can we do combined? <laughs> so <laughs> 55 years and older right here. <laughs> Hey guys, we're back on air. This is part two. Right. We, we had some small chit chat, which is which is great. But we're, we're I think this conversation is leading to uh, affordability, um, and mm. and so you know everybody is talking about real estate in the last couple of years. Like it's been such a huge conversation, and it's it's multi generational. Like you know I've seen conversations about real estate from twenty the last twenty years. First it was like you know it's a it's a right to buy a home. Then they went to a privilege of buying a mm. home. Then there was an investment property discussion. Now it's an affordability discussion and it's going like my kids at 15, 16 are concerned about buying real estate. Mm -hmm. So we talk about affordability and like the pressure, societal pressures of how to look. And we, I think there's more pressure today on kids and us on how we look all the time, what we're wearing. There are some people that don't care, but like we're talking about sneaker society. Yeah. I will never wear a sneaker to go you, anywhere. No, but you'll never, yeah, you'll never wear sneakers, which is literally which wore is Uggs here, but okay. I'm, but, I'm running. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but right. sneakers used to be didn't weren't this expensive. You can no. go and buy thirty nine dollars per like not thirty nine, but you can fifty sixty dollars worth of shoes. Yeah, pay less, baby. <laughs> yeah. So today it's like Air Force Ones, Air yeah, Force. Yeah, you have to keep up. You have to keep up. You have to keep up. The problem is now, I think that you're also keeping up with people because of that social media. Like Dimitri, you were right. saying you were keeping up with your circle, so you. Right. You know, you're more or less in the same social economic bubble, group as them, yeah, bubble as them. Sure. But now when you have social media and in like the age yeah. of influencers, we're comparing ourselves against Ooh, millionaires. Did you just point at me like I'm an agent influencer? <laughs> millionaires. <Yo. laughs> um, but yeah, no, you're comparing yourself against millionaires, like yeah. not day-to-day -day yeah. people. So that's, I think, where the danger yeah. is, is it's not comparing to our actual inner circle. We're right. looking at people who look like day-to-day -day people because that's influencers. Not They're not quite right. celebrities they look like they're just us yeah. but they're making millions of dollars and so like for the average guy or they're not just, or they're not there's and they're just lot, showing the best yeah. the best parts of their day well, which we all are which we're all guilty of right? right like we're choosy yeah. we're all so, selective so of what we good, on social, good social media. point here you know like mm -hmm. we come across buyers first time home buyers yes. second time home buyers third time home buyers there's always the question of living within their means mm. and i know families that will spend thousands of dollars on one gucci item or one prada item it's like but then when it comes to buying like their home <laughs> they get so weird about they it. get so weird about <laughs> yeah. it right yeah so then okay so you come across people so how do you how do you have the conversation what's the, is there a difference between the conversation with a first time home buyer how they save money mm -hmm. and a second time home buyer like are there any similarities or differences definitely differences because i would say second or third ho t uh, time home buyers they're typically looking at the equity in their property they i've i've hardly come across a guy who's selling the property and, and upsizing or downsizing and they are using their savings towards any part of their down payment they're typically just using the equity in their properties right. so it's the first time home buyers where there's conversation more conversation around savings you know gifted down payment mm -hmm. that gifted sort down of payment. thing that's a good conversation yeah gifted down <laughs> payment that's a big one in canada especially and i think in the last few years it's mm -hmm. coming up a lot um, but yeah, no, it's a, it's a big conversation with savings. And I remember when I was buying my first home, I have my financial planner, my financial advisor, and it was, I don't like those people. Oh, he doesn't work at a bank. Though. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Because they're like, don't buy a house, put your money no, here. No, 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 no. See, he's and not, we'll give he's you a negative like twenty percent no, no. return. Don't back. trust the. I mean, no offense, but like bank advisors. I, the only thing is, is like I've worked at the bank, and I just always say like the turnaround is way too high. You can't build a real relationship. Right. And a lot of the times, these are honestly like, you know, just like graduate. These yeah. guys just graduated out of university, and this is their entry level job. Mm. They don't really care. They're going to get in. They're going to get out and build in the banking right. network and system. So that's always my. I, I call against Here's a mutual the, fund. Hmm? Here's a mutual fund. Yeah, exactly. Yes. And, and there's and, REITs in and, there. And exactly. And they're supposed to be experts on everything, like mm -hmm. mortgages, assets, investments. They don't, you no, know. You need, you need specialists. You need a specialist. Yeah. So anyway, I was talking to my specialist and when I was buying my first home and um, the down payment came from myself and it was, it was over a million dollar property. And yeah. I say that to mention because I needed 
20% on my purchase and it was very substantial down payment. Right. So my fear was like, I work so hard. And when you see money in a statement in a savings account, you're like, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. And I was like, you expect me to part ways with this and put it in a house? Like, are you, that, that account is gonna go to zero. Yeah. Like literally it will be zeroed out once I buy this house. You feel good when you see the zeros. It feels so good to get the monthly statement like, and see like the money the, that's yeah. there, right? You're not alone. I think all of Everyone. us is so, like, you know, the minute you start seeing that, right yeah. and and well i had to yeah. like literally deplete it for right. to put into my house and so what but my financial like planner good advice. well yeah so what my pl financial planner told me and i'll never forget it and this is what i tell all my clients now too as i pass it on is you just feel comforted by the fact that you get this monthly statement and you see, call it $200,000 in your bank account every yeah. day. You get this portfolio statement month over month, quarterly, whatever, and you get to see the dollar value. That's what gives you comfort. I didn't give away my money. I didn't give away my down payment. It's just put in a different asset. Yes. And the, the, like, the anxiety comes from the fact that I don't get a monthly statement. I don't need a monthly statement to know how much money's in my house. I know it's there. The equity continues to build. And that's the advice mm -hmm. I give. It's, you wouldn't you wouldn't have this much doubt when your financial planner says, Hey, give me that 10 grand and let me put it in a mutual fund. And you'd be like, right. okay, cool. So then why do you have so much doubt when a realtor says, give me your 10 grand and I'll invest it in a house. Right. It's because all of a sudden you just don't see that, that monthly statement. That's the only, it's, it's just like a mind. That's so it's impactful. A mind. It's a mindset. Yeah. yeah. yeah and so, so for me, that helped me so much when I purchased my first house. And when my financial planner told me that I've never forgotten that. Yeah, wow. no, that's good. Yeah. That's a good advice, actually. That's yeah. really impactful. What was the best right. advice you got <laughs> about real estate? Well, for me, um, you know, when my clients say everybody, you know, first time home buyer, they have ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollar down payment, but they want the, you know, um, million dollar home, which is nearly impossible depending your financial situation. And we quite often talk about affordability, right? Yes, of, of course, you cannot afford a million dollar home, which maybe, yes, five years or 10 years ago would have been 400 or 600. Mm -hmm. But now you can start at a smaller uh, rate. And that's what I did with my children, right? We bought a small condo, right? And I keep repeating this uh, story, yeah. right? Yeah, you got to work your way up. Yeah, yeah. like, you know, oh God, and then... Yeah. That's what I think the generation, like, we have to talk about that because I think that's what this generation forgets is the expectation of what you should be able to right. afford on your yeah. first property. And that's exactly. why people can afford the first home. It's that they're not willing to buy what a first home looks like. Exactly. Yeah. Or a condo and yep. you can work your way up yep. and tradition, like, you know, what happened at that time, five years later, he was ready. To, my son was ready to move on. Right. So we had two options, sell or refinance. We refinanced, kept the original condo. Mm -hmm. And today he has equity on two condos that Amazing. you wouldn't be able to achieve um, on by investing your money in mutual funds or any other kind of like yeah. investment, oh, yeah. right? Now it's, I think you have to really um, prepare yourself a, a, as a parent who's giving your equity to your children. So how are you going to live when you retire. Yes. And so I'm seeing some families say, oh, my home, I bought this for $350,000 and now it's worth $1.3, $1.4 million and I'm gonna give this kid $200,000, I'm gonna give this kid $200,000 to buy their property. Now they're four hundred thousand dollars in debt, plus the two hundred thousand dollars they took out to to redo their kitchen and bathroom because they never did that for years. Yep. So now they're sitting on a six hundred thousand dollar mortgage at five point five percent fixed six, rate. Yeah, mm -hmm. That's that costs um, I think around thirty five hundred dollars a month. At least, yeah. yeah. You're you're restarting again. Yep. And then you're about to retire in five years. And unless you've worked for the government and have a really good pension, pension, yeah. But if you've worked in in private you're getting what fifteen hundred dollars a month yeah right yeah, yeah. It's, GDP, it's, yeah. It's, it's it's very it's a very dangerous place when fam when parents say here child here's a hundred thousand like here's equity yeah. well i mean i don't know if i've talked to you guys about this mm -hmm. but i mean it's Tell a us. whole other topic and conversation <laughs> but have we talked about reverse mortgages uh no but you know what's a great you Such know what we'll, segue to please let's mortgage. talk about reverse yes. mortgages it's just everything that you mentioned and yeah. because i do think that there is going to be a lot of this in the next like five ten fifteen years because this is the the challenge is the the down payment is often the challenge mm -hmm. of of my generation, young people younger than me, because it's the saving. Oh, while just to go make money, just go work. Yeah. Just <laughs> Not that simple. <laughs> Not that simple. I tell my fifteen year old, get out there yeah. and work. Fifteen? Oh, he's starting them early. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Very early. Um, no, it's. Uh, I just uh, catch me up to where we were again. 
reverse mortgages the reverse mortgages how they're going to come up in the with the money yes yeah. so with the reverse mortgages i do see a lot of parents looking into because some are so sitting explain on to assets. us what is reverse mortgage let's right. fast so, forward yeah okay so if we fast forward into reverse mortgages yeah. essentially it's a way for you to take out equity of your home if you're 55 years or older okay. um so, so you have to meet that though. criteria <laughs> <laughs> anyone sitting at the table <laughs> uh, combined can yeah. we do combined <laughs> so <laughs> 55 years and older right here um, okay so, so if you are 50 so you both so if you're a husband and wife you both need to be yeah, you both have to be 55 yeah oh, yeah, so yeah. If you so you have a, to be uh, sugar or <laughs> mama or yeah, yeah. Or yeah. you have yeah. to wait okay yeah and then you have to wait but okay. then you also probably wouldn't need a reverse mortgage in that case okay so all right awesome. so yeah. <laughs> for uh those of us who would need a reverse mortgage it's used for multiple reasons but in this case i see it happening a lot more of taking out the equity from a home so a free and clear home let's say your parents are sitting on or even minimal of a mortgage most most parents have a small mortgage if any loan to value loan to value maximum depends on the age so oh. it's actually so that's the beauty of a reverse okay. mortgage just to go over it in high level there's really no qualification me measures other than like you don't need income you hardly need good credit they just like even if you have delinquencies they'll still accept you really? the main thing is your age because what it is is it's equity it's going to be a pretty low loan to value starting at 15 percent, ranging all the way up to i believe depending on the lender up to about 50 percent loan to value so, so when we say loan to value is that there has to be on the appraised more than, value more than 60 percent. so let's say your home is worth a million dollars yeah your mortgage cannot ex your current mortgage at the moment cannot be more than five hundred thousand. depending on how old you are though so if i'm 55 tiered. no if you're 55 then it's at the lowest so it it's 15. the older plus. you yeah it, a it, smaller it, mortgage yeah the older you are the larger loan to value because you're getting closer to when you will have paid out the mortgage. Oh, yes. Okay, got you, got the you, got older you. you are. The older you are, the less the mortgage less risk you're, you're supposed to have. Yeah. No, the higher mortgage you're allowed to have because there's less risk for the bank because you're getting closer to the point where you will have paid off that mortgage. Do they Read between you to the lines there. No. Okay. No, just home insurance, classic yeah, home insurance. Lines. Okay. Um, no, just classic home insurance. So the beauty of it is to me is it's a pretty hard conversation and it's it's not an easy conversation right. but the reality is is that if our parents own properties especially if they're free and clear ultimately we know who that's going to it's the next yes. generation right it's paid off great but now i you know you're waiting 10 20 hopefully 30 40 50 years <laughs> until you come into that uh inheritance yes. right and now the whole taxation system around that. well that yeah. that too but but more than that it's how do you get your how do you make sure your kids are taken care of now yes so aren't they not better yes there's interest of course there's interest on a reverse mortgage but one there's hardly any qualification measure it's just up to, due to your age and that's going to dictate your loan to value you get an appraisal she's staring at me like i'm 55 the next mortgage broker <laughs> i'm oh, never uh, getting invited back <laughs> Age. Oh yeah, I know. Oh, oh my God. It's like ageism. Sorry, you got really serious Seriously. for a second. So. <laughs> He's jealous that I'm 30. Everybody, yeah, very, very. <laughs> yeah. now, no, what's the new fad now on, on Instagram? Like, show what? me your 21. I'm like, oh yeah, show me your 21. I can't find those were pictures. There, were there cameras back then, Sharif? <laughs> there was cameras. We used to get films. You know, we used to have those films, negatives. We can look in the window. Oh my God. <laughs> um, so anyway, reverse mortgage. Uh, point is, is that minimal qualification. The loan to value is determined by your age uh no payments required absolutely no monthly payments and that's the benefit okay. so because right. you're talking about these parents who are now trying to gift funds out right. you know do renovations on their own home they can do all of those things with a reverse mortgage not worry about monthly payments because once you come into retirement like you said if there's no pension you're yeah. not going to be able to afford right. that mortgage like your monthly so you can can't. reverse reverse yeah. why it's reverse why it's called reverse everyone thinks it's so scary but why it's called reverse is because your mortgage balance goes in the opposite direction okay of course you're not making monthly payments so your principal and interest are not being paid down okay so interest is accruing on the back end right. that makes it reverse the mortgage balance is increasing okay so the argument towards that because every parent will be like well no i work so hard to pay off my debt i don't yeah. want a mortgage yeah. at all on my property yeah. The argument is okay so if interest rates on your reverse are somewhere between six and seven percent today right. standard pretty standard interest rates the appreciation value on the home for your child that if you gift them the 100k 200k right. will be astronomically more than if you make them wait 10 to 20 years yeah, to enter the market right. when they're able to so you, inheritance you take a reverse mortgage let's yeah. say four hundred thousand dollars okay you're not paying interest on that 
you're pay, no. you're not making any payments. Not Interest is being payments. applied it's to it. Inside. It, exactly. Yes. Exactly. So your parents feel nothing. Mm -hmm. And then the great thing is is typically people aren't taking like four hundred K from their parents. Yeah. But let's say you are. It's usually somewhere between one hundred to two hundred. Parents might okay. take out a little more to pay off debts, whatever. Right. But you're getting that down payment. And the beauty of it is too is it doesn't have to be permanent because what we do know in the Toronto GTA market is properties do appreciate. appreciate. I think historically in the last 50 years, on average, it's about 5.5% mm -hmm. year over year. So let's say your kid, the kids now buy a property, mm -hmm. maybe in five years, by the time that term is up, right. there might be enough appreciation at the end of their five year term. We refinance it, we take out the equity, we pay mom and dad back, mom and dad pay off it's that reverse advantage. mortgage, everyone is, is That's in the clear, brilliant. right? So it's like there are solutions yes. around, and, and I do think it's gonna come up a lot more because unfortunately our property prices are not decreasing and I don't see that I happening. don't see that happening so yeah. to enter the market these larger down payments are going to have to be available with yeah. my generation the generations to come they need access to large lump sums of money so instead of waiting for inheritances because it's not going to come from savings not yeah. at that rate right yeah. so uh, accessing the equity of parents' homes, I think that that's going, I already see that's, it happening, but I think that's the future of where mortgages are going to be. That's, uh, you need a mortgage broker that can sit down and explain to you yeah. the options, right? I mean, and that's a big thing because this is not an easy conversation as a client to have with their parents. Right. You need a professional in that room to explain it. As a kid, telling your parents like, hey, let me, like, don't worry, like, yeah. give me a hundred thousand. I have this like product. Yeah. They're going to be like, right. no way. <laughs> so it's up to us to be a part of that right, conversation right. to to give them the professional advice because often parents are, especially with the, the title reverse mortgage, yeah. people are very scared and have a lot of anxieties about that. change the title to some, something like reverse freedom 55. Beautiful. <laughs> Marketing. <laughs> Marketing. Okay, so before- And then so, you start counting down your age. Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> you do. No, but this is this is actually a great idea. Uh, but reverse mortgage has not, it's not, it's not something new. It's been around no. for many, many years. I remember hearing about this a long time ago. There were some, uh, this is around 2000, 2000, 2007 and eight. You could take a HELOC, you can take a uh, home equity loan, some, right? some, and you can yeah. invest that. And, mm -hmm. you know, there was different ways of doing this. So it's always been around, but I, been I hope around. the instruments change and, and become better. Obviously it sounds like it. Yeah. Um, but before we started, Yes. When we, before the break, we had a question. Yes. We forgot what the question was. Oh gosh, was. what was the question? I, oh, it was the first time home buyer incentive. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. So let's there let's. Uh, okay, let's, so now you've hit up mom and dad, and yes. you have their money right. to so enter the market with first their down payment, and, and then so now you're ready. And we got a few minutes, so I want you to answer that quickly. <laughs> okay. Okay. Quickly. Okay. But so, wait. Okay. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Keep asking me like six prong questions, and then want me to get through. I'm trying not to. It's just not in my nature. I think we need to have a repeat of this the next session. I know. I've just won myself an invite back. We're brought you back. We'll bring you back in six months exactly. but only if you give us our, our team some referrals you know this doesn't come for free oh yeah. so we're okay, counting on you because our business depends on referrals me too that's right. so funny my business <laughs> works right. the same way okay, so, so how about this okay, it's a two-way street it's a two-way street, street right, right? Yeah, you can. so um, we need education first though education empowerment first. through knowledge okay. is yeah. what oh, i look at you. say so, <laughs> <laughs> so the first time home buyer incentive so just to run through the quick ones or the the main ones are your land transfer tax rebate so in the gta anywhere in Ontario, you will get a land transfer tax rebate, either $4,000 or $8,000, depending on the city you're in. Okay. Uh, first time home buyer incentive is where the government will lend up to five or 10%, 5% on a resale property for your down payment. But you do have to qualify for that and apply on your own through the government. People think it's through your mortgage broker mm -hmm. to go directly through the government, qualify and get that money. Um, the RSP, so you can take out up to $35,000 from your RSP with no tax implication. You just have to pay repay that how much percent 35,000 oh. per person per person okay and then you just have to repay that replenish that account within 15 years okay and then the most recent one is the first home savings account right. which uh just pretty much another tax-free tax account free, right. that you can contribute up to 8,000 a year okay. 40,000 in your lifetime take that out tax-free build investment income in that account tax-free but you do have to take the money out I think it's like 17 years after starting it or when you turn 71, something like that. But you have okay. to use the money or else it becomes a registered So there's account. an age limit or a time limit on it. Yes, right? and people so. are leaning towards the first home savings account because the main difference between that and the RSP is that you don't have to replenish the first home right. savings account. So that's the but main But that's only feature. for first time home buyers, not second yeah. time. No, okay. first, first home savings. So just to help with taxes, building money, savings okay. and all of that. Are there so any incentives, incentives for second time buyers? No. 
No? <laughs> <laughs> just no. checking. Not government checking. ones, at least. No, no, no government. Um, okay. Yeah, like yeah. lines of credit refinancing. Exactly. No, there is Different. incentives. It's just not from the government. They're just it's not from the just government. The, the new g- Freedom 55 reverse mortgage. <laughs> <laughs> Sharif's privately funding these, so reach out to him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's funny, like, okay. keywords, right? Um, that's a lot of good questions and a lot yeah. of good I information today. I don't even think we got today. through all of it. No. No, uh, that's why we'll probably need a second session, yeah. right? Yeah. So really. any parting After ways, 10 minutes. Girls. Well, they need me, and that's been uh, that's been determined. So yes, for sure. I mean, we can we wouldn't be uh, doing kidding. what we're doing if we didn't have a you know yeah. no, the same mortgage here. like you know right. advisors and things like that. 